Hello, and welcome to our NASCO Healthcare uh, live demonstration today. My name is Anna, and I am the customer service manager here at our NASCO Healthcare location in Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin. And next to me is my esteemed partner, Mr. Khaled Abudea. Hello and welcome. And Khaled is one of our training managers here with us. Uh, as well, we have um, with us here today online, our colleague, Stacy, and she's up in our Canadian region. And Stacy will be monitoring the, the chat next to our Zoom window there. Mm -hmm. Zoom window, you will see a chat box. And if at any time you have any questions, feel free to put those questions into the chat box and Stacy will be monitoring those questions uh, for us to, to answer a little later on. Before we get started, I, I do want to mention that Colette and I do not have any um, ability to help you with technical support for the Zoom. So if you should encounter any technical difficulties during our presentation today, do not worry. The session is being recorded and we will be able to uh, let you view it later at a later date. Um, so I think that's that's everything that we have. And we are just absolutely thrilled to be here today. Just absolutely excited. And um, Colette, are you ready to get started? Yes, we are ready. Let's get started. Okay. Well, I'm going to move aside here. And Colette, we're going to zoom in and we're going to start our presentation. Yes. Okay. We'll begin by talking about our new male and female catheterization simulator. It is an evolution of our existing catheterization simulator and provides realistic training for urinary and suprapubic catheterization. This improved catheterization trainer is configurable between an adult male or female using the included interchangeable genitalia. This simulator also replicates the human condition and anatomy as realistically and as current technology allows. So the additional features, new features for this include a foreskin option, as well as an enema and rectal, rectal exam training. So let's look at what we will cover today. Today we will look at what you will receive in the package, highlights of the unique features, an overview of the setup and the cleaning, and then we will answer any questions you might have. So the catheter, this catheterization simulator is ideal for training anyone, absolutely anyone, involved in the catheterization uh, field, such as nurses, support staff, especially those in long-term care, surgical clinics, and of course, hospitals. So let's take a look now um, at what comes with the package. So Khaled, can you help us take a look at what's included? Yes, the simulator come uh, package in uh, a carry hard case and uh, include the following uh, accessory, uh, the soft female gentle, and the male gentle simulator uh, lubricant two ounce and uh, uh, the French folly silicon catheter and uh, the gentle housing unit quarter simulated urine reusable fluid supply bag Came with a three bladder, three for skin, three was sobra pubic skin, one syringe, and baby powder, a stand, non stick, and a uh, the fluid supply for the IV bags uh, needed, but it's not included with that with this product. Back to you. Okay, thank you very much, Khaled. Well, I think we should look now um, at the close-up of the skin, if we could. So Khaled's going to show us here 
a close up of the skin. All right. So as you can see, the skin is very lifelike, long lasting and quite durable. It promotes better representation for clinical education and procedural task learning. The skin is made from a soft silicone that looks and feels more natural. This of course offers a more realistic manipulation of the skin needed to complete necessary steps in catheterization. Well, let's move on now to the setup. Let's take a look at the catheter setup here. So we will begin by removing the housing from the carry case. Of course, Kellett has already done so. Next, we will insert the genital into the housing unit. And when you are doing this, you will notice that it, it will fit nice and snug. Ensure now that the clamp on the fluid supply bag is closed, um, especially as you attach the tubing lure on the end of the fluid supply bag. You'll do this to the other end of the swiveled lure onto the bladder here. So next, Colette is gonna show us, he is going to place a small amount of lubricant. In just a moment, he will. So a small amount of lubricant will be placed onto the, the valve end of the bladder. And Colette is using a Q-tip there for easier application. Okay, once we have lubricated, we will insert the bladder into the open hole in the back of the genitals. And then, and then we will push the bladder in until it completely stops. You will notice once again that the bladder, it will fit nice and snug. The swivel end should be facing the back of the housing and connected to the tubing that is attached to the fluid supply bag. Now, if you find that the bladder does not fill, fit smoothly into the bladder entrance, simply add a little more lubricant and reinsert the bladder. Okay, well, once the bladder is in place, we will close the clamp on the fluid supply bag and then we will fill it with distilled water or simulated urine. For this step, please be sure to follow the instructions on the simulated urine bottle. The recommended amount of fluid to fill the fluid supply bag is between 100 and 250 milliliters. The bladder itself will hold anywhere between 20 and 25 milliliters. So as Colette has shown, please be sure to hang the fluid supply bag. Okay, well next let's move on to the urinary catheterization. For this step, we will need to lubricate the catheter and the urethra each time a catheterization procedure is attempted. So once again, Khaled will lubricate using the supplied lubricant and this will minimize the damage to the urethral wall of the simulator. Very, very important that you only use the supplied simulator lubricant. Make no other substitutions such as water soluble lubricant like KY jelly as they tend to build up in the urethra over a period of time. So next we will open the clamp on the fluid supply bag 
And as Khaled shown, he's inserted the catheter and then the fluid will begin to flow. Be sure that you have a basin nearby, such as we have here, as you will need to drain the urine that flows through the catheter. All right. So let's take a look here now. The next thing we will show you is the suprapubic catheterization. So for this step, first thing we need to do is remove the genitals. And then we will lubricate the end of the bladder here in just a moment. Well, and Khaled has yeah, some lubricant there for, yeah, so lubricate. And he's going to slide that over the, the end of the bladder there. And then he will be ready now to slide it into the housing unit there. You will notice that we are using the same, same tra trainer uh, for, for each, each step here. And the bladder will be nice and snug once again. And we will be connected to the fluid supply bag. Very good. So just like so. Okay. So next we will move now to, so Khaled is, yes. Let explain what you're doing. You are draining. We're doing the, the super. Yeah, so he's okay. You had to reinsert the, the catheter, and that may happen sometimes. You may have to have to Just try again. All right. Well, let's now look at the foreskin application, shall we? So we have our male genitalia there. And what we will do is we will simply place the foreskin over the gland. And Colette, I believe you use um, baby powder? You could other option, baby powder, or you could use a little kit. Maybe powder lubricant, okay. So that'll help with putting the gland on. And sure. you'll notice when you do this that the gland will be slightly tacky. The placement of the foreskin can either be higher or lower depending on how much skin is needed. Very simple to do. All right, thank you, Khaled. You're welcome. All right, well, let's move on to the next, next um, step here, which is the enema, the enema insertion. We will use the same bladder unit here, like we did with the catheter and the suprapubic uh, for the enema. So we uh, are going to going to move the bladder to the enema position in the back of the genitals here. 
make sure the fluid supply bag is filled and clamped and that the fluid supply bag is in a hanging position. Once again, um, we do have the fluid supply stand here with us, but it is sold separately. So you will want a fluid supply stand uh, for, for your training. So you'll make sure now that the enema bag is clamped before starting and the enema bag that is shown, um, again, it, it is not included, but maybe purchased separately. And Khaled, we're going to lubricate the end of the enema tube here and unclamp the bag. And we will place the enema tube into the rectum. For this step, you will want to make sure that you follow the correct procedure as advised by the instructor. All right. So now Colette is going to remove the fluid um, as that is a very important part uh, to ensure that the longer the units um, are, they last longer uh, before you stow them away in your carry, carry box. After the training is completed, make sure that you close the clamp on the fluid supply bag. Okay, so Colette's doing that now. That is closed. And now you are ready to remove the bladder from the genitals. So make sure now that you will dispose of any of the fluid that lies within the fluid supply bag and the bladder and using a sink or waterproof container. You may then leave the top of the fluid supply bag open, allowing the fluid to evaporate and remove the bladder from the tubing and hang them both upside down for draining and drying. You will also want to wipe off the soft genitals and squeeze the fluid out of the end of each training session, which is especially important uh, before you place the, the units back for storage. Remember now that all components must be dry before placing them back into the carry case. Completely let the fluid supply bag and the bladders dry before placing them back and discard the fluid supply bag or bladders that have not been properly maintained. All right. Yeah. So the next, next feature here today is our new multivenous IV and injection arm. It is an evolution of our popular advanced IV and ejection arm. And actually, it is our number one selling product. So number one selling product right here, folks. This, this arm is uh, representing a life uh, adult male, full-size adult male arm, replicates the human condition um, and as anatomy, uh, as realistically as current technology will allow. So who is this IV arm ideal for? Well, it is ideal for absolutely anyone who needs injection training, and it is perfect for nurses, emergency first responders, lab technicians, phlebotomists, and of course, anyone in the healthcare setting, absolutely anyone. So, all right, let's see here what we're going to be looking at. Uh, today, we will look at what you will receive in the package. We will highlight the unique features, talk about setup and cleaning, and of course, as Stacy mentioned, we will have an opportunity for questions. All right, Kella, let's get let's get started here. Let's show our folks uh, what comes with the package. Great, thanks, Anna. Uh, the arm cam uh, 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 package in the soft carry case and in, uh, came with the following accessory, actually. Uh, three cc syringes and 12 cc syringe with needles and two fruit supply bag 
an infusion butterfly needle, two small towel, infusion needles, and two pints of better water of uh, simulated blood, and uh, the skin sealant. And one of those arm stand, unique. And of course, plus the IV arm. All right, thank you, Khaled. You're very welcome. Well, let's, let's move on now to showing uh, we'll show a close-up of the skin here in just a moment. Okay, we'll zoom in so you can all see. All right, very good. So let's take a look here. The skin is very lifelike, long-lasting, and durable. You can see the enhanced aesthetics with soft silicone skin that looks and feels more natural. The skin and the veins are self-sealing and under normal use, hundreds of injections may be performed before needing to replace them. All right, let's take a look at the flexibility of the fingers and the wrist here. So as you can see, the fingers are very soft, flexible, and molded separately. The flexion of the wrist helps develop manipulation skills. So another great feature is the fact that this arm has eight fluid lines for complex veins and structure and axis. So Khaled, let's look at the core. So Khaled has the core arm there. And we're gonna we're gonna let you see now the the different veins that we have. The hand veins include the dorsal metacarpal, the dorsal intercapitular, and the branch of the cephalic vein of the thumb. And the hand veins include the dorsal metacarpal dorsal inter intercapitular and branch of the cephalic vein of the thumb. The arm veins include the basilica, cephalic, median cephalic, median basilica. There it is there. Median cubital. median antibrachial right there and accessory cephalic also new is the inclusion of a small floating vein let will show us a small floating vein and this is to practice the rolling um, and disappearing for difficult vein access Okay, thank you, Khaled. You're welcome. Well, we are going to move now into the arm setup. All right. We will begin by adding one pint of distilled water to the pint bottle with the blood powder. And when you do this, it is very important to shake the mixture well. We will be sure now to, um, that the clamp on the fluid supply bag is closed. And then we will fill it with the blood and hang the bag no more than 18 inches above the level of the arm. All right, 
Next, we will attach the fitting end of the fluid supply bag A tubing to one of the shoulder tubes. Right there. It is important to ensure that the arm now is palm down at this point. So palm down. Okay, let's move, let's just move the arm over just a little bit. There we go. Thank you, Kala. Now we can see it a little nicer. So we are palm down with the arm. And with the other shoulder tube attached to the second and the empty fluid supply bag, we will gradually, here in a minute, there it is there. So that's the empty fluid supply bag. And we are going to gradually flush the vascular system with the synthetic blood. All right, just as Khaled is showing. So slowly open the clamp as Khaled just did on the fluid supply bag. And the, the pinch clamp there should be open, allowing some of the blood to, to pass through the system until all the air bubbles have been removed. Now you will close the clamp on bag A and then turn the arm over. And so now the arm will be uh, palm up. When we turn the arm over, we will be palm up. Okay, so now let's move the arm over, Khaled, and we'll go palm up at this point. Okay, so we are palm up now. And we'll slowly open the clamp on bag A to allow some of the blood to pass through and to remove any of the remaining air that is trapped in the system. Once the system is filled, you will close the clamp on the resting fluid supply bag and leave the hanging fluid supply bag clamp open. The arm is now fully pressurized and may be used palm up or if you prefer palm down. Okay so Colette has gone ahead and, and turned the arm palm down um, and the arm is ready now uh, to perform injections or withdrawals along any of the eight fluid lines present in the arm. So Colette here in a moment is going to show us the blood withdrawal from the vein and he will be using a butterfly needle and we recommend this the use of a small diameter needle for this procedure ideally a 20 or a 25 gauge would work well And you will also want to use distilled water to prep the injection site and as an injection. Sometimes it takes a few tries to find, to find the vein there. Mm You'll know that you've done this correctly when the realistic flashback will occur um, and that's when the vein has been correctly punctured. So um, you'll, you'll notice that you've done everything correctly yeah. once you've found the vein and punctured it. Yes, when in doubt, just, just try again and, and you can work slowly. 
you know, this is the purpose of the arm is, is to practice and, and to get used to the locations of the veins. Just like in a real, real setting, right, Khaled? Yes. I just, uh... So once again, you will want to use distilled water when you are prepping the injection site and for the injection. So distilled water. See. There we are. Wonderful, Khaled. <laughs> So now we've successfully completed the procedure there. It takes a few tries, doesn't it? Correct. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a tricky one. Okay. All right. Well, when you, are fin when you are finished, you may pour the blood mixture back into the mixing container and you absolutely may reuse that mixture. So um, that's, that's the wonderful thing about the, the blood mixture. You may reuse it um, at, la at a later time. Using the IV bags, we will flush the arm with a clean distilled water and wash the outside of the arm with the mild liquid detergent and water. Um, and of course, when we're, we're done with that, we, we should allow the arm and the veins to dry completely prior to storing. Um, thinking of the skin and veins, we do sell replacement skin and veins uh, and they are available for this arm and they're extremely, extremely simple to, to use and to replace. This new multivenous IV and injection arm also has the option to add an automatic circulation pump. And the great thing about the circulation pump, as Colette has right there, is it allows for continuous flow between the IV fluid bags. It's a uh, turn on and start or stop and this is both right it will go backward start stop and we're gonna go other way this is your unique pump to use and you could just adjust the speed you could go faster this optional and this That's is a new brother. nice brother. And Kaleda, this is offered in universal voltage. Correct, yes, yes. it works in, uh, in every country. Wonderful, yes. That's wonderful. Um, universal voltage will work anywhere, any country. That's wonderful. All right, well, I think it's time to take IV and injection training to the next level. Are you ready? We are ready, always ready. I know I am. Well, I believe that then concludes our session for today. On behalf of NASCO Healthcare, thank you once again for joining us. It was our great pleasure. And as Stacy mentioned, if you have any further questions, you may reach out to your sales directors and uh, we'll, they'll be happy to assist you. Don't forget to follow us on the media. On the yes, Broadway. we are present on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So if you don't already follow our social media pages, uh, please do so as that way you can stay current and, and can see the new and latest developments. So It was uh, our <clears throat> great pleasure and we hope to see you soon. Yes, take care and we hope to see you again next time. Thank you. Thank you.